It is another beautiful morning and what a blessing to be alive today and be able to hear God's word. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new, welcome to the family. And if you're tuning in again, thank you for tuning in again. Please do comment, share, subscribe and, you know, share to your loved ones and your family. Also go to our Facebook page and go and like that and see what's on there. Um, today we are ready for the word of God. I hope you guys are as pumped as I am. Um, without further ado, here we have the word of God. Stay blessed. A very good morning to each one of you. Greetings in the lovely and precious name of Jesus. It's a joy and a privilege again to share the word of God with you. Once again, thank you for taking time to tune in and to join in. Uh, we consider it an honor and a privilege. Um, last, in our last session, we looked at the subject, it is paid in full. And uh, we were looking at the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And when he died on the cross... He cried out, it is finished, which we said it's an accounting term that is used in the original Greek. It means it is paid in full. Uh, and so today I just want to look at uh, and expand on that. So we are looking at it is paid in full part two. If you would, uh, that's what would uh, t entitle it. Um, so, but before we get into the gist of the message, I just want to share a little uh, a few phrases that I came across when I was preparing uh, for this particular topic. And uh, it was talking about the Old Testament and the New Testament. And uh, the few lines were put in this manner. It says the New, that's talking of the, of the New Testament. The New is in the Old, contained. The New is in the Old. In other words, the New Testament is in the Old and it's contained in there. <clears throat> then it goes on to say, the Old is in the New, explained. So the Old Testament is there in the New, but it is explained. And then it goes on to say the New is in the Old Testament, concealed. The New Testament is there in the Old Testament, but it is concealed. Uh, and then it goes on to say the Old is in the New, revealed. So the Old Testament is there in the New, but it is being revealed. Wow. I liked that partic these particular phrases. So uh, let me repeat it. The, the New is in the Old, contained. The Old is in the New, explained. The new is in the old, concealed. The new is in the, the old is in the new, revealed. So <clears throat> that's what we see as we read through the Old Testament. <clears throat> that uh, it is there uh, in the new and it is explained. Again, the new is there in the old, but it is con concealed or contained. Um, <clears throat> so when we look at the tabernacle of Moses, what we find is that the tabernacle of Moses was divided into three parts. The outer court, uh, which contained the brazen uh, laver where they would wash their, their hands and wash everything. Uh, it was made up of the mirrors that were <clears throat> given in the offering by the women. The mirrors in those days were brass. So the word brazen means it was made of brass, brazen laver. And then <clears throat> there was the brazen altar, and all the altar of brass also. Um, so those were the pieces of furniture in the outer court. And then in, when they moved in into the holy place, the second compartment was made, uh, the pieces of furniture that were there were the table of shoe bread and the altar of incense. Those were the two uh, pieces of furniture. Obviously on the um, altar of uh, incense, there was the golden lampstand also. Uh, <clears throat> And so that's what we find. And then in the Holy of Holies, uh, that's, we find that there was the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, inside of it, con it contained the Aaron's rod that budded and also contained the tablets uh, of, of, uh, of stone for the Ten Commandments and also the, a golden pot of manna. So these were the three partitions. Uh, <clears throat> and so there was a uh, between the holy place and the holy of holies, there was a veil, a curtain that was put in place. That's where we will dwell on in, uh, in greater detail. A little, a little bit uh, on the outer court, but mostly the veil and then the holy of holies. The holy of holies uh, did not contain any, any, any natural light. The only light that would be there was the presence of God, the Shekinah presence of God. <clears throat> and so, Having said that, let's just read a, 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 a few verses. Uh, we will, like I said, we will look at the partition between 
the holy place and the holy of holies and also the ark of the covenant <clears throat> when we read in uh, exodus chapter 26 god is giving moses the instructions to re- to build the tabernacle and this is what he says verse 31 you shall make a veil wo- woven of blue purple scarlet scarlet thread and fine woven linen <clears throat> It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of acacia wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there behind the veil. Notice behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy place. The holy of holies. So that was the division. And remember... Only the high priest went in into that particular place once a year on the Day of Atonement. Uh, maybe we, we might just uh, read uh, a, a Hebrews chapter 9. Uh, and this is what he says. Then in, it says, Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was this lampstand, uh, the, t- the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot, we cannot now speak. Uh, now, when these things had, done, had, had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. Uh, it goes on to explain that. So, but it uh, ex- just mentions what is mentioned in the, book, in the book of Exodus. Now, this is where it gets interesting when we talked about the the new being hidden in the old, um, and then the old being explained in the new. Uh, and so w- when we come back to the veil, the veil, it says, you sh- it was made, it says, you shall make a veil. I'm going back to Exodus 26. You shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, and scarlet, uh, and fine woven linen. So notice that. A veil woven of blue, purple, Scarlet, scarlet is red, and fine woven linen is white. And these particular uh, colors are symbolic. Uh, <clears throat> purple speaks of royalty. And uh, when you then look and bring it into the New Testament, uh, it speaks of the kingship of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the veil itself is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, as much as many other objects that we find uh, in the tabernacle or, or the tabernacle itself. Uh, so, purple speaks of royalty. Jesus is king. And Matthew, when we look at the Gospels, Matthew uh, actually presents Jesus as king. Uh, and then scarlet, which is red, speaks of the suffering servant. When he was crucified for us, his, he shed his blood. Uh, and then um, what we find is that Mark, so it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Again, this is typified in the Gospels. <coughs> Mark uh, in his presentation of the gospel, presents Jesus as a servant. Uh, and so, uh, the scarlet speaks of that. And then, the li- white linen uh, speaks of uh, the, uh, the son of man. And Luke presents Jesus as the son of man. And then the blue, again, speaks of Jesus as the son of God. Blue speaks of the skies. He's coming from heaven. Uh, 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 and so, he, he is depicted in the gospel of john as the son of god so these are the ways the gospels are depicted and what we find is that the veil had these particular colors so the veil itself was representative of the lord jesus christ it was a type of the lord jesus christ and so when we go back to the scriptures that we read in our last sharing where we read in john chapter 19 verse 30 says so when jesus had received the sour wine he said it is finished it is paid in full. Hallelujah. 
Tetelestai was the Greek word, an accounting word that indicated that the debt has been paid. The price that is required has been paid. The, the justice system of heaven has been satisfied. It is paid in full. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And we, <clears throat> we compare this particular scripture with a similar passage in Matthew chapter 27. Verse 50 says, And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Matthew then sheds light on something that uh, John doesn't shed light. It says, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Hallelujah. Now, remember, I'm talking about the tabernacle of Moses. From the tabernacle of Moses, what we find is when they got into Canaan land, later on um, uh, uh, in the reign of King David, uh, David wanted to give, build God a temple and God said, no, you can't. You have got blood in your hands and then your son will do that. Then Solomon built the temple. So Solomon uh, built it according to, th to the pattern of the tabernacle. It also had these particular, besides other rooms, it had these particular divisions. And the veil was a, a similar uh, make as it were. Um, and so this is the veil that is being talked about. Now we all know the temple got uh, destroyed and rebuilt during the times of Nehemiah, etc., etc. <clears throat> but in the times of Jesus, the temple was standing. And the veil, which was between the holy place and the holy of holies, was there. <clears throat> and when he dies on the cross, it says he cried with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. If you add on to John, that's the point where he says it is finished. It is paid in full. Tetelest die. And when that happened, the veil of the temple was torn in two. That veil that separated the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant dwelt um, uh, and uh, the holy place uh, where the high priest went in only once a year. He was the only one allowed. No one could come into the presence of God. And so that veil was torn in two. From, notice it says from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. Indicating that it was God reaching out to men, not men reaching out to God. Religion is men reaching out to God and Christianity is a relationship of God reaching out to men. So it was torn in two. According to Josephus, the historian, it was a very thick curtain. You couldn't easily tear it, but it was torn. No hands were seen, but it was torn from top to bottom. This was a signal to say the old covenant had come to an end. The time where men could not access the presence of God had come to an end. Now, if you link this with the verse of scripture where we read about the veil and say the veil speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a type, a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the veil was torn, symbolizing Jesus. His body was broken. When it was broken, that was the end of the old covenant. What a, what a massive and, and powerful typology. The veil speaks. Uh, in, in, in the literal sense was torn. But in a symbolic sense, it spoke of the body of Jesus just as he died and he said it is finished. At the same time, that's when the veil was torn into. His, the veil was torn, his body was broken, signifying that that era where men could not access the presence of God had come to an end. Men could now come into the presence of God. Not only the high priest, but you and I could come into the presence of God regardless of where you stay, whether you stay in a shack, whether you stay in a mansion, you can access the presence of God. You don't have to wait for a high priest or, or go through a, medi a mediator. You can come into the presence of God on your own. That is the meaning of it is paid in full. Hallelujah. So each one of us can access the presence of God because the price has been paid. What a privilege. What an awesome honor that we have. Hallelujah. So I like the, the way the, 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 the hidden part of the Old Testament comes into light when you compare with the New Testament. It's uh, very enriching. And um, when I was meditating on these things, sometimes, a lot of the times in my preaching, I look for uh, take-homes for people to, to... I ask myself, what action points do people have in this message? Some messages don't have action points. They, they are doctrinal. They are the skeleton on which we are built. If you remove my skeleton here, I will, I will just crumble into a mass of flesh. What's keeping me upright is my skeleton that's on the inside. So some messages like this one that I'm preaching uh, is part of the skeletal, mass, skeletal uh, portion of our, of our being as Christians. They might not be take-home uh, action points if you want to put it that way. 
The action points will be a realigning of our thinking patterns in line with the doctrinal revelation that we find in the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, and so when the veil was torn, it was torn. And again, what then happened was that uh, uh, in the inside of the Holy of Holies, that's where the ark of, the, of, of God was. Now, the ark we are told in um, Exodus, uh, th this is how it was built. It says, I think I alluded to this in our last sharing. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, etc., etc. Acacia. Some Bibles would say shittim wood. Okay. Uh, and then it says, you shall overlay it with pure gold. Acacia or shittim wood is symbolic of humanity, the flesh, uh, man. A gold speaks of divinity. So when the veil was torn into, when the body of, of our Lord Jesus Christ was crushed on the cross and crucified, when he died and said it is finished, it signified that you and I can access, the, you and I that are human, that are flesh, could access the divine, just as symbolized by this particular, uh, the makeup of the ark. Uh, uh, and, and so it meant that available to us was divinity. God dwelling in his inside of us. He's called Emmanuel, God with us. Not only is he God with us, he's God in us. He lives on the inside of us. God dwells on the inside of us. Hallelujah. It has always been his play, his will and his desire to dwell amongst his people. Hallelujah. Uh, and then it says in verse 21 of Exodus 25, you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark. And in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. Uh, and then he talks, then he, I, I like the verse 22 of Exodus 25. And there I will meet with you. Hallelujah. So it means that right there in the prison, with the veil being torn, available to you and I is communion with the Father. Communion with our God and maker. He says there I will meet with you. So the era of that being only the uh, preserve of the high priest is over. It's, that was what was signified by the uh, tearing of the veil into two. The tearing of the, of the body of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. A new era was ushered in. Hallelujah. But here is something uh, I want to also uh, highlight. Uh, in, we have mentioned it. It's there in the book of Exodus. But Hebrews chapter 9 summarizes for us. He says uh, in um, verse 3. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the Holy of Holies, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna. Notice, inside the Ark, there was the golden pot of manna, and there was Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, the tablets that contained the Ten Commandments. Again, this is symbolic. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Aaron's rod that budded symbolizes um, a, 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 a renewal, a refreshing, flourishing fruitfulness that uh, with the tearing of the veil, the body of Jesus, available to you and me is fruitfulness. Available to you and me is, is, is productivity. Similar to what God commanded, commanded us in Genesis to say, be fruitful and multiply. Subdue the earth, replenish it, have dominion. Fruitfulness is available to us through the tearing, the tearing of the veil, through the, the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Available to us again, restored to us, is the Genesis mandate. Fruitfulness, productivity, uh, multiplication. So you and I can access that through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The tablets of stone, a commandment, remember the tablets uh, uh, had the Ten Commandments, which was the moral law. Uh, and then, obviously, later on, God gave all the other laws uh, that uh, guided the, the lives of the, the children of Israel. And so, it speaks of our access, uh, uh, our ability to access the, 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 the instructions of God for us to be able to walk in the ways of God. That, that's what it symbolizes. That now, we, we are uh, we, we can be able to fulfill the commandments of God and to walk in them. Um, remember he, he, when, 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 when um, he, he was speaking he, earlier on, he, he spoke of the very fact that he was 
he would fulfill the law, that he was fulfilling the law, him, himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. So available to us uh, as, uh, as, as the veil is torn into, into two is the ability to walk in the commandments of God, to walk and fulfill that uh, and not to fail. Now, again, there was um, the, uh, the golden pot of manna. Manna was their daily bread. They, they had it every day. So it speaks of gain of us for communion with God, where we can have access to God, have daily sustenance from him. Uh, Jesus himself did mention, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the manna speaks of daily sustenance. It speaks of us receiving from him uh, input. But again, remember the Lord Jesus Christ, when he spoke about this in John chapter 6, he said, uh, Moses gave uh, your father's manna, but I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. So the manna itself speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, that available to us uh, is that uh, uh, sustenance from the Lord Jesus. He says, whoever eats of me shall never hunger. Hallelujah. So uh, when we uh, move into that holy of holies, the, because the veil has been torn, we are able to uh, partake of the divine nature, to partake of the Jesus himself so that we never hunger. On the inside of us, uh, that gap that uh, needs to be filled is filled. That God gap is filled and we do not uh, hunger anymore. We, many times people look to outside, outside sources for satisfaction. They end up looking to material things drugs, whatever, relationships. Thank God for all the other people and all the other things that are around us. But whatever, what, that which gives us sustenance and satisfaction in our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the bread of life. I am the bread of life. He who partakes of me, who eats of me shall never hunger. I like that. Shall never hunger. Some of us uh, believe it in theory, not necessarily in, in in truth, when we believe it in truth, we will be able to tap in on the strength from the inner man, on the strength that we have on the inside, because we should never hunger. We should never get to a point where we are desperate because we have the sustenance that comes from God. So the tearing of the veil indicated uh, access to all of this. Obviously, on top of the ark was the mercy seat where the blood was, was placed, which means available to us is forgiveness of sins. Uh, with the blood washing away our sins, not only first time when we believe on, on the Lord Jesus Christ, but again on a daily basis. Because he says in First John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. So available to us is cleansing from all sin so that we are able to walk this walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, when he said it is paid in full, he literally meant it. And he, uh, that's what it indicated and signified. That available to you and me, available to us, is the presence of God. Available to us. Because remember, the Ark of the Covenant itself represented the presence of God. Available to us is the Shekinah glory. Because within the Holy of Holies, only the light of God shone in there. The pressure of maj majesty, the Shekinah presence of God. That is now available to you and me. And we can walk in that. And we can dying in that. We can revel in that. And that's what has happened to us, you and me. That's what has been made available to us. And I trust that each one of us, uh, our, our consciences are stirred once again towards these truths of the word of God and we begin to walk in them and begin to partake of them and to begin to uh, make them a part of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust that this has been enlightening and, and a blessing to you. Uh, I, I encourage you to read further into the Word of God uh, and, and dig deeper. Uh, find other resources and books that speak more into this and read. Uh, it's so rich, so, so amazing, uh, uh, revelatory. I, 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 indeed it is. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. Hallelujah.